Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Our original plan for today was to meet as many of you as possible in person in the Convention Centre in Dublin and take you through our full plans for 2022. But alas, given the current public health restrictions and, and position and the heightened uncertainty around the trajectory of COVID and the additional pressure that all of this puts on businesses, we decided that today's briefing should be virtual and should focus on the information that's most important to you right now. Therefore, today, we are going to share details of our 2022 Tourism Business Continuity Funding, and we will share our wider plans with you in January. We fully appreciate how difficult it is for businesses to deal with the continuing challenges and uncertainty that COVID brings to the tourism sector. And as always, we remain fully committed to doing everything we possibly can to support business through this crisis. Before we look at a key part of this support for 2022, I want to just take a few moments to look back at 2021. I know it's a year that many will want to forget pretty quickly, but I think it is important that we reflect on how well the industry rose to and dealt with the seemingly never ending challenges that were thrown at it. While 2021 was certainly a better year for tourism than 2020 was, uh, it has been a far more difficult year than we expected it to be. And looking back, I think everyone in the tourism sector can be proud of, of how well we all pull together to fight for sector survival and set ourselves up to build back better. For us in Folja, Ireland, it has been a privilege to work with so many amazingly resilient, positive and creative industry partners and so many highly committed stakeholders from industry associations, local authorities, our own department officials, and of course, our own minister, Catherine Martin, and her colleagues all across government. Despite all of the challenges, a lot has been done by so many. And I would just like to share a short video with you, with you now of some of the ways that Folger Ireland contributed to these sector achievements over 2021. Good evening. All across Europe and much of the rest of the world, COVID-19 infections are on the rise. 2021 called for survival in the midst of continued uncertainty. In a year that was tougher than anyone expected, together with our industry partners, we shared and faced a constant challenge. Through our many alliances, we continued to work together quickly understanding and responding to the changing needs and the serious challenges engulfing every part of our tourism economy. With the support of government, we delivered seven different funding schemes and 75 million euro in tailored support. We continue to work with destination recovery task forces and local authorities across the country to help key tourism areas plan for recovery. We delivered relevant and practical business supports through our online business support hub with thousands of training days, suites of tailored supports and multiple practical training tools. As the situation shifted, so did we to make sure our sector remained open and customers stayed safe. We worked together with the tourism sector to instill confidence in the safety of our tourism and hospitality businesses. As our economy and our sector reopened, Together we embraced the nation's newfound love of Ireland's great outdoors. With an investment of 45 million euro, we put in place outdoor infrastructure, enhanced outdoor dining and urban animation, and supported the development of walkways, cycleways, greenways, and blueways. The nation was inspired to discover Ireland with our relaunched website, driving nearly 400,000 referrals to tourism businesses. Our 6 million euro marketing investment provided plenty of inspiration for planning. 44 million euro was invested in four new iconic immersive experiences. And together with our local stakeholders, we brought opportunities to life, creating world-class visitor experiences and making the most of our natural and cultural assets. Our comprehensive new plan for Dublin encouraged more visitors to our capital and created new ways of bringing the history, heritage and the culture of the city to life. Significant investment was made in specialised training and the digitalisation of visitor attractions and activities. As we emerge from survival and move into recovery, challenges remain. Together, 
we continue to work with businesses to address the labour and skills supply. But as we support industry facing into these challenges, we've also identified opportunities. We've worked with the Business Tourism and Golf Recovery Task Forces to agree priority actions for revenues over the years ahead. In 2021, we continued to build the pipeline of business tourism opportunities for Ireland, investing in our luxury offering and showcasing golf and leisure tourism, pitching for future business at virtual and in-person events. All of this was achieved together, and it has brought us closer than ever as an industry. Together, we have made it this far. We stand proud and resilient, and a little bit hopeful. We will move further into recovery in 2022 and bounce back stronger than before. We will achieve it together. So how have businesses performed in 2021? Our recent tourism barometer, the fieldwork for which was undertaken in early November, had responses from over 1,100 businesses. And it tells us that there have been big variances in the performance by different parts of the tourism economy. The average change in turnover from 2021 versus 2019 is much more severe where there is dependency on inbound tourism. For example, in tour operators and DMCs and coach operators, they've seen notable losses. Around half of them are more than 85% down this year. At the other end of the scale, many self-catering and similar non-serviced accommodation providers have managed to avoid reduced turnover versus 2019. And in fact, 36% of businesses in these sectors actually increased turnover. Throughout 2021, we continue to work closely with our COVID industry advisory group, local destination recovery task forces across the country, and directly with tourism businesses to ensure that we continue to respond to the ever-changing challenges facing the industry. I would like to thank all our partners and stakeholders for their input and advice. And I would like to thank all of you, our industry colleagues, who spoke to us day in, day out, and responded to our research requests in your thousands. This input has been invaluable to help us design all of the supports and schemes that we have put in place, including the scheme we are discussing today. I just want to give you a very quick update on the financial supports that we have delivered to businesses since the spring of 2020. In 2020, the COVID-19 Adaptation Fund helped over 5,000 tourism and hospitality businesses, including attractions, activity providers, hotels and restaurants, with grants of up to 15,000 euros for things such as barriers and protective screens and the development of outdoor areas. We also administered the Restart Plus grant for bed and breakfasts, and we assisted over 1,300 B&Bs with the cost of restarting and operating their businesses in 2020. And this year, we implemented the outdoor dining scheme in partnership with local authorities across the country. Through this scheme, we estimate that over 4,000 tourism and hospitality businesses from small cafes through to attractions and hotels will have been supported with grants of up to 4,000 euros to develop uh, and increase their outdoor seating capacity. Through our business continuity schemes, we have delivered funding to support strategically important core tourism businesses across accommodation, attractions, activities, inbound agents, coach tourism, and other tourism transport providers. In total, 75 million has been paid out through these schemes to almost 1,700 businesses to help them to continue operating and to survive the impacts of the pandemic. And here's what you have said. Tourism businesses in every county across the country have benefited from funding support throughout 2020 and 2021. And when we speak to these businesses on the ground, the feedback is that this funding has been essential for survival. And hearing this feedback is really gratifying to the team in Fulge Ireland, as I'm sure it is to our departmental colleagues and our minister who fought so hard for this funding. I would just like to acknowledge the teams in Fulge Ireland who had never done anything like this before. And this was no easy task. Prior to COVID-19, we usually grant aided maybe 50 projects a year. So to move from this scale to funding thousands of businesses through multiple schemes and trying to do this in a way that worked as complementary as possible with with new and fast changing government supports and also to try and achieve a fair and maximum survival impact 
with about 100 million in funds when the industry had suffered a multi-billion revenue loss was all incredibly complex. Staff from every part of our organization, from the tourist information office teams to the strategy management office teams and so many other teams, all brought their expertise, their imagination and their passion to bear in order to deliver for our industry partners and friends. So to all of my colleagues involved, thank you. I would also like to say a particular thank you to all of our colleagues and local authorities throughout Ireland who helped so many tourism businesses in so many ways, not least of which was the huge administration involved in the outdoor dining enhancement scene. We know that 2022 will be challenging and we will continue to support the sector to tackle these challenges head on so that tourism can recover and get back into growth. The allocation of the 50 million euros in budget 22 for the further phases of the tourism business continuity program will help sustain strategic tourism businesses next year. And before I hand over to Adrian O'Donoghue, head of our strategy management and investment analysis team, who will take you through the detail of this, there are a few contextual points worth mentioning. Firstly, the 50 million we have for 2022 is obviously less than the 75 million we had in total across 2020, 2021. So it will not be possible for everyone to get the same amount as they received previously. Thankfully, revenue and outlook, while still very tough, are better than they were this time last year. And for some parts of the tourism economy, recovery is underway. Secondly, as a government funded scheme, we must ensure that this scheme meets the appropriate standards of accountability of taxpayer funded spending. We have done our very best to design the scheme in a way that meets these standards, but also makes it as simple as possible for businesses to engage with and to apply for. Thirdly, business performance across the tourism sector this year, as we've seen previously, has been very mixed, with those businesses that rely heavily on inbound international tourism struggling the most. We have designed a scheme to support those still experiencing the most difficulty as a result of this pandemic. The phasing of the scheme has been set out to make sure that support is provided quickest to the businesses that need it most urgently and taking into account the other government funding that has already been received. With this in mind, strategic tourism transport businesses and Irish-based inbound agents will be supported in the first two phases, with attractions, activity and accommodation providers supported in the second two phases of the scheme. Fourthly, the scheme has been designed to support strategically important tourism businesses who are significant contributors to the overall tourism economy, both regionally and nationally. For the purposes of this scheme, we have quantified that as having a minimum level of turnover of 50,000 euros per annum. And finally, in order to identify those businesses who have suffered significant losses, we have also specified that applicants' average monthly eligible tourism turnover in 2021 must be down at least 50% compared with the average monthly eligible tourism turnover for 2019. I'm now going to hand you over to Adrian O'Donoghue, who will take you through the scheme in more detail. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, as Paul has outlined, business continuity funding is again really important for the sector in 2022. The focus remains to provide funding to strategic tourism businesses to support their survival and recovery next year. It is our intention to provide funding to those eligible businesses as quickly as the process will allow. So I would like to take you through this year's program, how we are planning to do this. And I'm going to do this by covering the following four areas. Briefly, I will cover the scheme criteria. It's important for you to understand the broad criteria underpinning the approach to the 2022 programme. Secondly, I will take us through the timings of the programme when schemes will launch and when you need to ready yourself for applications. Thirdly, I will give you an overview of the four schemes that are going to be rolled out. And finally, I'll briefly look at the application process and next steps, but a particular focus on ensuring that eligible businesses receive funding from us as soon as possible is really important as we want this funding to be active in your business. Firstly, I'm going to talk you through how these schemes are set up and the associated criteria. Reiterating what Paul has outlined earlier, with our funding pot of 50 million, we've set aside different criteria this year to broaden the number of potential applicants. To do this, we've reduced the qualifying threshold for businesses. Last year, turnover need, only needed to be down 75%. This year, it needs to be down 50%. 
This is to reflect the stronger performance in 2021 compared to 2022. So both the thresholds for the minimum required eligible tourism turnover of 50,000 euro and the maximum award per business of 800,000 continues to be the same for this year. Next, we will look at the timings of the schemes. The first two are strategic tourism transport and Ireland-based inbound agents with applications open early in January, while attractions and activities providers and tourism accommodation providers will open early in March. These are similar to those in 2021. However, we have condensed the 2022 programme into four schemes from seven last year. So we're focused on delivering four schemes with two schemes running concurrently. We're moving as quickly as possible uh, on these schemes. The closing dates will be four weeks after the opening of each one of the schemes. And you can see the dates here. The first two schemes, which launch in January, we will have live webinars on January 6, providing much greater detail on each fund. It is important that those doing the applications on behalf of your business join this webinar and understand what is required. On the day, there will be an opportunity to submit live questions to the project team. For those that missed the webinar, this will be recorded and made available afterwards. The same will apply to those opening in March and we'll be in touch with reminders close to, to the time for that group. I will take you through each of the four schemes now and talk about the businesses that are eligible for funds. First up is Strategic Tourism Transport. Last year, a Strategic Tourism Transport Fund was operated. Also, we ran a separate fund for Coach Tourism. So it makes sense to bring these together this year as many businesses in this sector provide multiple tours, tourism transport offering. We have a fund of 14 to 16 million envisaged for this fund. As with all schemes, total funding depends on the number of eligible businesses that successfully apply. Strategic Tourism Transport opens for applications on January 11th. Moving then on to the second scheme, which is uh, Ireland-based inbound agents. This is focused on uh, inbound tour operators, destination management companies, and professional conference organizers. Funding of 11 to 13 million is planned for this cohort. On January 12th, one day after transport, this scheme will open for applications. The last two schemes uh, will launch in March, starting with attractions and activity providers, which we'll now look at. This is a similar scheme that, that we ran in the second half of 2021. And funding of 7 to 9 million is planned for this scheme with an opening date of March 8th. Now moving to the final scheme, uh, which is for tourism accommodation providers. This is broadly the same as last year. For statutory and non-statutory accommodation providers, funding of 11 to 13 million is planned for this scheme. And this opens on March 9th. So to summarize in the four schemes, um, they cover most of the areas we supported last year and we've condensed the schemes to simplify the process further. Finally, I'm going to look at the application process with some lessons we learned from last year and next steps. We will have all of this year's business continuity uh, program funding of 75 million completed before Christmas. However, eligible businesses did not get the money as quickly as we would have hoped because of inaccuracies and our missing documentation in their application. Therefore, I want to highlight and emphasize the importance of overcoming this in order to have the money working for your business earlier. So funding times varied from five to 16 weeks from application to payment, and these delays can have a significant impact on your business. Where errors or omissions are made, they go into a different process of engagement which takes much longer to resolve. Those that took an extra hour to understand the application process found that they got more fun, they got their funds more quickly. We are, however, here to support you. And along with the webinars, we will produce guidelines, frequently asked questions, and you can contact our customer support without, with any queries. For applications, um, 2021 management accounts will be needed to help compare with 2019 performance. We're not looking for audit accounts, so we would urge you to begin the process of preparing these in readiness for applications opening. And finally, let's cover the next steps. For webinars, in order for you to receive an invite for the upcoming webinars in January, you can either go to our website where you'll be directed to a page to register, or if you have applied to us before, you will automatically get an invite next week. As you can see, we've now the times finalized for the first set of webinars. So on Thursday, January 6th at 11.30, we will start with tourism transport. And then at 2.30, we will have the inbound agent webinar. So in conclusion, we realize just how important these funds are for your business. There are really three things to take away from today. Firstly, the schemes are largely the same as last year with some tweaks. Secondly, we've reduced the downturn threshold from 75 to 50% to increase the number of people that could be eligible. And finally, in, in applying for these, we are asking you or the person responsible in your business to set aside some time 
to review the scheme information before submitting your application so that we can efficiently get funds out to your business. This will ultimately help us achieve the aims of the funding program to support your survival and recovery in 2022. So thank you very much for your time and attention. I'll hand you back now to Paul. Thank you, Adrian. Before we close, I would just like to say a few words on 2022. Although there is no doubt that next year will be challenging, there are reasons to be optimistic. Assuming there is no sustained impact from Omicron and other variants of 20, on 2022 travel, then it should be a much better year than 2021. Both the Irish and global economic outlook is positive. Most advanced economies and a large share of the emerging and, and developing economies are projected to regain or surpass pre-pandemic GDP levels. Driven by strong consumer spending, our own Department of Finance is estimating that a 6% growth in modified domestic demand for 2022. And Irish households are expected to be dipping into an estimated 15 to 16 billion in accumulated excess savings to finance higher levels of spending. A similar unwinding of savings is also expected across most advanced economies. Tourism's path ahead is undoubtedly dependent on how the pandemic evolves. If Omicron does not have any material impact on travel in 2022, then current indicators are that next year, Ireland's air access capacity will be almost 80% of what it was pre-COVID. European markets will be particularly important to drive the initial recovery in overseas revenue, as short-haul travel is expected to return faster. Domestic travel will remain important next year. Pre the pandemic, domestic tourism accounted for about 33% of earnings, excluding carrier receipts. The overseas market is not expected to fully return until 2026. Therefore, attracting domestic visitors will be more important than it was pre-COVID for some years to come. Looking at the forward booking numbers for 2022, from our tourism barometer, which was completed pre-Omicron, so things may well have changed. But these do show some grounds for cautious optimism, with 78% of businesses holding bookings for 2022. In terms of timing, April onwards looks quite promising, but of course all of this is dependent on the public health situation at the time. Another ground for optimism is that the potential for retaining the domestic tourism business from 2021. Consumer feedback on recent domestic trips has been very positive, with 80% of visitors being either very or extremely satisfied with their domestic holiday. Some operators are seeing Irish holidaymakers rebook for next year already, especially families. The stays are going to be longer than normal in some cases and booked further in advance. And also there's a high willingness to spend. A final but important factor worth mentioning is that COVID has changed the way businesses operate, and we are seeing a lasting and positive legacy uh, coming from the developments that have been made throughout the pan pandemic. 96% of operators can name at least one permanent positive change in how their tourism business will run in the future. Around a third of businesses have opened up new outdoor spaces, especially those serving food or drink. Half of the restaurants and pubs and cafes and hotel sectors now have new outdoor spaces. We're also seeing increased di digitization of the tourism sector with 65% of attractions and activity providers reporting that they now have a better online presence. So while the current situation is extremely challenging, I do believe that once we can clear these COVID clouds, the future for tourism in Ireland is bright. In the new year, we will take you all through our plans to help the tourism sector to realize this bright future, to rebuild the sector in 2022 and beyond. This will include our plans to help support the industry, meet the staffing challenges, and developing even more attractive destinations all around the country, improving the industry's digital and sustainability capabilities, our plans to drive business tourism recovery, and of course, our domestic sales and marketing campaigns. We will have a briefing on our overall annual plans on the 20th of January, along with a bespoke session on labour and skills where we will share the robust research we have completed on what needs to be done to change the perceptions of careers in tourism and how Fulcher Ireland will support the industry to make these required changes. The following week on the 27th of January, we will have a series of regional briefings outlining how businesses can get involved with and leverage the Fulcher Ireland activity. 
And on the 3rd of February, we will share exciting new product developments over the last two years, including new attractions and new outdoor tourism infrastructure, as well as our plans for future developments in these areas. You will receive a save the date for these briefings shortly. And as we move into the festive season, it is important that we all continue to work together to stay safe. We will have a, we have a podcast and a toolkit to reflect government public health advice, which includes a video, downloadable posters and assets that can be used across your premises and your website. This is available, of course, on FolgerIreland.ie. While there is no doubt we still have a very tough year ahead of us, we do have reasons to be hopeful. Tourism will recover and it will come back stronger. And our priority in Falch Ireland remains the same, supporting the survival of tourism businesses and driving the recovery of the sector. Finally, I would like to wish you all a safe and as prosperous as possible December, a peaceful Christmas and a brighter new year.